Hi, welcome to Christensen Wealth Management. I'm Michael Christensen, and thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this weekly stock market update for the week ending Friday, September 28, 2018. Before I jump into the charts and commentary, I would like to welcome you to autumn. It's hard to believe that summer is over and that Monday begins the month of October. But I'm looking forward to the change of season and the holidays that our family gets to enjoy. And uh, this week's quote of the week is from Henry Ford. Henry Ford was born 1863, died 1947. You know him as the pioneer of American automobiles and a uh, legend in the business community. Henry Ford once said, It's not the employer who pays the wages. Employers only handle the money. It is the customer who pays the wages. Those are some wise words from Henry Ford. Well, a uh, quick comment, uh, commentary about the markets. The Dow Jones Industrial Average broke to a record high last week, but has since failed. It, uh, it has uh, now gone back below the January 26th high. So it'll be interesting to see if it can hold on and continue higher, or if it gets stopped at that January 26th uh, high point. The S&P 500 is uh, just kind of hanging up here at highs. It's still looking pretty good. And the NASDAQ 100 um, had a good run for three months and has since broken its trend line. You'll see that in a moment. So there's a, you know, a lot going for the NASDAQ 100 on the moving averages, but you'll see that the, the trend line has been broken. So there's a little bit of a caution flag there. Let's go ahead and jump into those charts, and I'll begin with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Looking at this chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average from November 1st until September 27th, 2018, you can see that uh, for the last few days the Dow has sold off. It peaked on September 21st, and as of September 27th, we're right there at the end of that black line. So we shot up from September 17th until the 21st and then sold off. So uh, what I did mention just now is that the Dow did um, fall back below its uh, high from January 26th. So let me just quickly show that to you. So you can see this high right here from January 26th and draw a trend line representing that high. And you can see that we popped up there on the 21st and then turned right around and failed. So the question is, Will this, um, will that January 26 high hold and will the Dow be headed lower? I don't know. We just need to watch and wait and see where it goes. Let's look at those short term and intermediate term indicators. So the shortest indicator is that five day moving average in red and the 20 day moving average in blue. And right now the five day moving average in red is still above the 20 day moving average in blue. So we have a short term strength confirmation still in effect. And if we look at the intermediate term indicators, the 20 day moving average in blue and the 50 day moving average in purple, um, the 20 is still above the purple 50 day moving average. So we have intermediate term strength confirmation as well that's still in effect. So right now, other than the fact that the Dow sold off after the 21st uh, record high, um, everything is still looking okay for the moment. And uh, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Looking at this chart of the S&P 500 stock index, uh, you can see the uptrend has been pretty much continuing. Uh, we, we peaked on September 21st and we sold off for the last uh, for th for four days. And then we had a little uptick here on the 27th of September when this is being recorded. And if we look at the Five-day moving average in red, it is above the 20-day moving average in blue, confirming short-term strength. And the 20-day moving average in blue is above the purple 50-day moving average, indicating intermediate-term strength as well. So things are looking pretty good for the S&P 500 um, still. The, uh, the one thing to be on the lookout is if I change this into a candlestick chart, which represents the high, low, open, and closing price for every trading day, and I connect the lows of June 28th and go on up to today, 
you can see that the low of June 28th touches the low of August 15th, which touches the low of September 11th, and yesterday, September 26th, and as of the 27th, we're still sitting right above that line. So if the next five trading days for the S&P 500 are, are in a downward direction, and this trend line going back to June 28th is broken, that will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if we can hold on to this prior high of January 26th, or if we come down back below that, that might be a sign of um, weakness for the S&P 500. So let's just keep an eye on that, see which way it goes. But as of right now, things are still looking pretty good for the S&P 500. Here's the chart of the NASDAQ 100 stock index, and you can see that it continues higher, but it has not made a new all-time high since August 29th. So right now it's pretty much gone sideways for a month, and it's very interesting to see because that's been the, uh, the leader for much of the spring and summer, but it is uh, treading water as of right now. Let's go ahead and change that to a candlestick chart and let's connect the lows to see what the trend is uh, looking like. So if I connect the low from April 4th and I go on up, you can see that the low of April 4th and April 24th, April 25th, June 28th, July 2nd, July 30th, July 31st and August 17th, you come back up here and we broke that trend line back on September 7th, regained it, failed again on September 17th, and got back above it briefly on the 20th of September, failed again, and as of September 27th, when I'm recording this, we have regained that trend line again, but this breakdown below the trend line could signal um, some weakness building. Um, so let's just, you know, we'll keep an eye on the NASDAQ 100. Um, it is a uh, very, very volatile uh, index because so much of this index is weighted toward the top 10 companies in the index. But let's go ahead and look at the five day moving average in red and the 20 day moving average in blue. And you can see that um, the five-day average has just recently recovered the 20-day. So for the moment, we have a short-term strength confirmation. And the 20-day moving average in blue is still above the 50-day moving average in purple. So we have an intermediate-term strength confirmation as well. So the NASDAQ 100 is looking good on these moving averages. But we did break below the April to September trend line and it's really struggling to hold on to that trend line. So the next five days could be critical. The next month could be critical going into the uh, midterm elections, perhaps. That might, that might uh, have some volatility in this market as well. Here is my bonus chart of the week, the Russell 2000 Small Cap Stock Index. And this particular index is failing and it's interesting because these are 2,000 small companies that are domiciled in the United States, do a lot of their business in the United States, and for it to be showing this much weakness is very interesting to see. Let me explain what I'm looking at here. You can see that it has you know, risen pretty significantly since February 5th when it hit those lows, but once it peaked on July 20th, it has really gone nowhere. So that is three months of just sideways movement. And we are, well, here was the high of June 20th and the high of July 9th. We broke above those highs back on August 22nd, rallied up to a high on September 3rd. And ever since September 3rd, for basically, well, for three weeks now, the Russell 2000 has been sliding. And now as of September 27th, you can see that we're back below the highs of July 26th, July 23rd, July 19th, July 6th, and June 20th. 
So we're back below all these highs, which means that this particular index is struggling significantly. The other thing that is worth mentioning is that this is a, um, a wedge-shaped pattern, which I've said in the past sometimes is a bearish situation. Let me go ahead and draw that so that you see what I'm talking about here. Draw the top line, and then we draw the bottom line. And you can see that the Russell has risen from that high of January 23rd, bounced around, made another high, bounced down, made one, two, three lower points, bounced off it one more time on September 13th into the 14th, then failed on September 17th, rallied up, Touch that bottom line one last time on September 20th and then has uh, dropped since uh, for the last week. So the Russell 2000 looks like it is in fact failing. Uh, that will be interesting to see because of the fact that this is a very broad index of 20 uh, of 2000 stocks, unlike the Dow, which is 30 the S&P, which is 500, and the NASDAQ 100, which is 100 stocks. So it's a pretty broad index, and to see it failing that way is very interesting. So a uh, little bit of caution on the Russell 2000 as we go into uh, October. Thank you again for watching this market update. Before you go, please do me a favor and click the subscribe button on this YouTube channel, and then click the little bell next to it so you'll be notified whenever additional videos are posted. And in the top right-hand corner of ChristiansonWealth.com, you will find the icons for our social media pages. And the uh, summary description of the YouTube video also has links to those social media pages. Uh, when you have time, please visit Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And like or follow the Christensen Wealth Management page while you are there. That way I can communicate with you uh, throughout the week using social media and through these videos. Well, have a great day. A great week, and I'll see you next in October. See you soon. Bye-bye.